my son, tell me, how is it that the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord, for I am too much in the sun. Oh, my Hamlet, do not forever seek for thy father in the dust, for thou knowest all lives must die, passing from nature to eternity. Aye, madam, but to sweeten commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give such mourning duties to your father. But you must know, your father lost a father, his father lost his. Oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew. Or that the everlasting has not fixed its cannon against soft slaughter. Oh, God! God! How weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. That it should come to this! Not dead two months. Nay, not so much. Not two. So excellent the king that was this, so loving to my mother. Heaven and earth, must I remember? She would hang on him as if an increase of appetite had grown by what she fed on. And yet, within a month, Reynolds, a nameless woman, a little month, before those shoes were old with which she followed my poor father's body, tears! Why, she, even she, a beast would have more and longer. Married with my uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than I am to Hercules. Within a month she married. Oh, most wicked speed to pulse with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It cannot, no will not come to good. Break my heart. Or I must hold my tongue. The air bites shrewdly. It is cold. What hour is it now? Oh, it's... Twelve. Look! It comes! Be thou a spirit of health or goblet damned! Thou comest in such a questionable shape that I shall speak to thee! I'll call thee Hamlet, King, Father, answer me. It beckons you to go away with it alone. But don't go with it. No, by no means. It won't speak. I'll follow it. Don't. Why? What should be the fear? It went before it. I'll follow it. No. Be cruel. You shall not call. My faith cries out. It's all I call. I'll make a ghost of him that lets me. Let's follow. Your father's love revenge his vow and most unnatural murder. Murder? Murder most vow, as in the best it is, but most vow, strange, and unnatural. Haste me to know it, so I may sweep to my revenge. Hamlet, here, just giving out that. Leg in my orchard, or serpent stung me. But no, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul! My uncle! I, that adulterous beast, stole my seat. Words, words, words. <laughs> what is the matter? Between who? I mean, the matter in which you read. Well, um, it says here that old men have gray beards, their faces have wrinkles, and that they have a plentiful lack of wit. All of which, sir, though I powerfully and potently believe, yet hold it not honest to thus sit down. For yourself, sir. To be as old as I am, it's like a crab you could go backward. Though there is madness, there is method in it. 
Would you walk out of the air, my lord? Oh, uh, into my grave. I most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything that I will willingly part with all. Except my life. Except my life. Mm. Bear be well. These tedious old fools. Ah, you go to seek Hamlet. There he is. Ah, my excellent good friends. Uh, how does thou, uh, Guildenster? Ah, Rosencrantz, what's the news? None, but that the world's grown honest. Oh, well, then is doomsday near? <laughs> <laughs> but your news is not true. Let me question more in particular. What have you, good friends, um, deserted the hands of fortune that she sent you to prison? Prison, my lord? <laughs> Denmark's in prison. That is the world one. <laughs> A good one, which there are many dungeons. Denmark being the worst. Uh, we think not so. Why, then, tis none to you, but there is nothing either good or bad. But thinking makes it so. Why? Indeed, is a prison. Tis too narrow for your mind. Um, your ambition makes it one. <laughs> well, what makes you an Elsinore? Uh, to visit you. No other occasion. Were you, um, not sent for? Uh, come, and deal justly with me. Speak. <laughs> What should we say? You were sent for. You have a kind of confession in your looks which you have in craft not to color. I know the king and queen have sent for you. A piece of work is mad. Oh. <laughs> now I am alone. Put a rogue in my Yet I can say nothing. Am I a coward? Am I that I, the son of a dear father murdered, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell, must, like a whore, unpack my heart with words and fall a cursing? I've heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play have by the very cunning of the scene been struck so to their souls, which presently they have proclaimed their malfactions. For murder, that would have no tongue, will speak with most miraculous organ. I'll place something like the murder of my father upon my number. I'll observe his looks. If he but clench, I know my course. The spirit that I have seen may be the devil, and the devil has power to assume a pleasing shape. Perhaps, out of my weakness, abuses me to damn me. I'll have grounds for my relative in this. The play is the thing in which I'll catch the conscience of the king. Be or not to be. That is the question. Whether it is noble in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing and them to die. To sleep no more, and by the sleep to say we end the heartache, the thousand natural shocks that the flesh is heir to, is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. Ah, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There is the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, 
the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office when he himself might his quietest make, the bare bodkin, the wood fardels bear, the grunt, sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death, an undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will, and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. Unless the native hue of resolution is sicklied over with the pale cast of thought, an enterprise of great pith and moment with this regards the occurrence turn awry and lose the name of action. Softer now, the fair Ophelia, nymph and all thy orsons be my sins remembered. How does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well, well. I have remembrances of yours that I have long longed to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. I never give you anything. You know right well you did. And with them, words so sweet as made things more rich. Their perfume lost, take these now. For rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. Are you honest? What? Are you fair? What means this? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. Could beauty have a better commerce than with honesty? I did love you once. Indeed, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. I loved you not. Then I was the more deceived. Get thee to another. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself honest, yet I can accuse me of such things that were better my mother had not borne me. I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious, with more offenses at my back than thoughts put them in, or time to act them in. Chit fellows as I do calling between heaven and earth. We are erred maids, all. Believe none of us. Call thy ways to none of Where is thy father? At home. Then let the door be shut upon him, so that he may play the fool in his own house. Farewell. Hamlet. If thou didst marry, I'll give thou this play for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, pure as snow, thou shalt not escape calumny. Marry a fool! For wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. Now quickly, too, to an honor, go! Oh, heavenly powers, restore him! I've heard of your paintings well enough. God hath given you one face, and you make yourself another. You jig, you amble, you lisp, you nickname God's creatures. Go! I'm more to it, and they be mad. I say we shall have no more marriages. Those that are married already shall remain. The rest will keep as they are. Go to a nunnery. Quickly! Oh, my dear Hamlet, come sit by me. No, good mother. Here's metal more attractive. Shall I lie in your lap? No. <laughs> I mean, my head upon your lap? I. Do you think I meant country matters? I think nothing, Hamlet. <laughs> it's a fair thought to lie between maids' legs. What is? Nothing. You're Mary? <laughs> Who? I? I. What can a man do but be Mary? Look how cheerfully my mother looks. My father died within these two hours. Nay, it is twice two months. So long, oh heavens! Die two months and not yet forgotten? Then there's hope that a great king's memory may outlive his life half a year.
some light. Awake. My wits are ceased. She says your behavior has struck her into amazement. Oh, wonderful stuff. I can so astonish her mother. She wishes to speak with you ere you go to bed. We shall obey. Wish you ten times her mother. Have you any further trade with us? What is the cause of your distemper? I lack advancement. How can that be when you have the voice of the king himself for your succession in Denmark? Would you play upon this instrument? I cannot. I pray you. Believe me, I cannot. Why, it is as easy as lying. <laughs> Govern these dentists with your fingers and thumbs and will discourse most eloquent music. <laughs> I am not the skill. Why, look how unworthy a thing you make of me. You'd play upon me. You seem to know my stops. You'd sell me from my lowest note to the top of my compass. This instrument has excellent voice, great music, and yet cannot you make it speak. <laughs> Do you think I am easier to be played on than a pipe? Call me what instrument you may. You cannot play upon me. time of night, when churchyards yawn, and hell itself breathes contagion to this very world. Now could I drink my blood, and do such bitter business that were quake the day to look upon. Not to my mother? I'll speak dagger, sir! But you, sir. Now might I do it. Now he's praying. And now I'll do it. And so I'm revenge. So he goes to heaven. Well, this is higher in salary, not revenge. He took my father gross, full of bread, with all his crimes broad blown, his flesh is made. No. Up, sword. Now thou more horrid hent. When he is drunk in sleep, or in his rage, or in the incestuous pleasures of his bed, at gaming, swearing, or some other act that has no relish of salvation, and then I'll trip him, so that his heels may kick to the heavens. And his soul may be damned and black as hell where to it goes. My words fly up, my thoughts remain below. Words without thoughts never to heaven go. Mother! Withdraw the room coming. Ah, uh, now, Mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, that was thy father much offended. Oh, Mother, you have my father much offended. Oh, come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question with a wicked tongue. Hamlet! What's the matter, now? Have you forgotten me? No. But the Queen, your husband's brother's wife. And, would it were not so, you are my mother. Nay, then I'll set you to those who can speak. Sit you down! You shall not budge necklace out of a glass when you be the most part of us! What will you do this? Will not murder me? Help! Help! What? Help! 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 How now? A rat? I know not. 
Is it the king? What a rash and bloody deed is this! Bloody deed? Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother! As kill a king! Aye, lady! T'was my word! The wretched, rash, intruding fool! Farewell! I took thee for thy bed. What have I done that thou wag thy tongue and noise so rude against me? Ask the blurs, the grace and blush of modesty, call for two hypocrites, takes a rose from the fair forehead of innocent love, and sets a blister there, makes marriage vows as false as dice results. What act? Look here, upon this picture, the counterfeit presentment of two brothers. Here is your husband. Now look, what follows? This is your husband. Like a mildew ear, blasting at his wholesome brother. Have you eyes? Have you eyes? You cannot call it love. For at your age, the blood is tame and humble, and sits upon a judgment it waits by. And what judgment would come from this to this? Oh, shame, why is I blush? Oh, heaven, speak to me no more. Thou turnest mine eyes into my very soul, and there I see such black spots. Nay, but to live in the rain sweat of an unseen bed, skewed and honey and corruption, honey and love-making over the nastiest time. Oh, speak to me no more, thy words like daggers enter my ear, no more, sweet heaven. A murder and a villain. No more. A king of trash and penance. <laughs> Save me and cover over me with your wings. Heavenly guards. He's mad. Do you not come, your tardy son, to chide that lapsed in time and passion lets go by the dread of your command? This visitation is but to wet thy wanted purpose. But look, amazement on thy mother sits. Step between her and her fighting soul. Speak to her, heaven. How is it with you, lady? How is it with you? My hour is almost come, my queen. Hamlet. Remember me. Oh, speak to me no more. My queen. No more! Indeed, this counselor is now most still, most secret, most grave. Who was in life a foolish name. Come, sir, to draw towards an end with you. Good night, mother. Hamlet, where's Polonius? At supper. Oh. At supper where? Uh, not where he's eating, but where he's eating. <laughs> A certain convocation of politic worms are eating at him. <laughs> your worm is your emperor for diet. We fat all creatures to fat ourselves. We fat ourselves to fat maggots. You are fat king, and your lean dagger, but variable service. Two dishes, but to one table. That's the end. What does thou mean by this? Nothing but to show you how a fat king may go across this through the guts of a beggar. Where is Polonius? In heaven. If your messenger do not find him there, then seek him in the other place, yourself. If you do not find him within a month, you shall smell him as you go upstairs to the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> go, go seek him there. You'll stay till you come. <laughs> Hamlet, for thy safety, must send thee hence with fiery quickness. Therefore, prepare thyself. The ship is ready, and everything is bent for England. For England! Aye, Hamlet. Good. So is it. If thou will renew our purpose. But come, for England. Farewell, dear mother. Thy loving father, Hamlet. Mother. Mother is father, father is mother, mother is man and wife, and man and wife is one flesh. And so, farewell, dear mother. For England! <laughs> Follow him! <laughs> I'll have him hence tonight, for everything is sealed and done. I pray you haste in this.
England. England. <laughs> Thou mayest not coldly set our sovereign process, which imports it full by letters congruing to that effect, the present death of Hamlet. Do it, England. For in my blood he rages. And thou must cure me. Till I know, tis done. I will speak to this fellow. <clears throat> Whose grave is this? Mine, sir. <laughs> for what man dost thou dig it for? For no man. For what woman, then? For no woman, neither, sir. Who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, sir. Rest her soul. She's dead. <laughs> a lawless man lying the earth there he wrought. Yeah, whose was it? No right. King Chester. This? Yes, gave him that. Let me see. Alas, poor York. I knew him, Horatio. Fellow of most infinite jests, excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. So or to my imagination it is. Here hung those lips that I've kissed, I know not of. What are your jibes now? Your gambles, your songs, flashes of merriment, or what to send it to Not one now to mock at your own grinning? For thee, Horatio, tell me one. Lay her in the earth, and from her fair and unpolluted flesh may violets spring. Oh, what? The fair Ophelia, sweets to the sweet Emma. I had hoped thou wouldst have been my Hamlet's wife. The hold of the earth while, till I have caught her once more in mine arms. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis? This is I, Hamlet! The devil take my soul! Hold up thy fingers! Oh my god, my Hamlet! Hamlet! I'll fight thee upon this theme until my eyelids no longer wag! What theme? I loved Ophelia! Forty thousand brothers could not the quantity of love make up my son. What will thou do for her? Oh, he is mad, Lord. Oh, God forbid. Show me what thou wilt do. Weep, fight, fast, tear thyself, eat a crocodile. You come here to whine, to outface me by jumping in her grave. He is mad. You get in quick with her, and so am I. Why must you use me thus? I loved you once. I love you no more. The cat will mew. The dog will have its day. I shall win. Hamlet, come. Take this hand from me. I've hurt you, but pardon it, for you are a gentleman. Shot my arrow over the house and hurt my own brother. I am satisfied in nature, but in my terms of honor, I stand aloof and will no reconcile. Bring us the foils. Come. Come. One for me. Let me be your foil, Laertes. In my ignorance, your skill shall, like the star in the darkest night, flick fiery off indeed. You mock me, sir. No. Give him the foils on myself. Hamlet, you know the wager. You have slayed the odds on the weaker side. No, I do not fear it. I have seen you both. This is too light. Let me see another. <laughs> this likes me well. 
set the stoops of wine upon the table. The Pamit shall give the first or second hit, or quit, and answer the third exchange. The king shall drink, in Hamlet's better breath. And in the cup he shall throw, a pearl richer than all the kings of Denmark have worn. Give me the cups. Come. Begin. thy health. Uh, set it by a while. I'll play this bout first. Come. Again. Another hit. What say you? A touch, a touch, I do confess. Our son shall win. The guards shall do not drink! No, I will. I pray you pardon me. <laughs> this is the poison cup. It is too late. I'll hit him now. And yet it is almost against my conscience. Come. For the third. Satisfied. Never believe it. I am more an anti proman than a tame. <coughs> you see that some liquor left? Oh, give me the cup. Let go. By heaven, I'll have it. Thing standing thus all, all alone shall stand behind me. If thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. 
I die for a The potent poison overgrows my spirit. The rest is silent. Good night, sweet prince. And flights of angels sing thee to my rest.